little bit more in tune with the vibe of that group. And so maybe caught a vibe. Hey everyone, welcome to Nicole Reacts, where I Nicole react to online marketing gurus that I find on the internet. My qualifications for snark and commentary are that I've owned a marketing company for almost 15 years. It'll be 15 in January. Hashtag blessed. And in that time, I've worked with hundreds of clients on marketing strategy and implementation, things like search engine optimization, website development, social media marketing, and related things like that. So online marketing, I feel generally pretty comfortable in, which is why I like to do these videos. Now, today's person comes at us via a YouTube comment. So thank you to all of you who have subscribed and commented, liked, and otherwise made me feel less like I'm shouting into the void. And if for some reason you're just running across these videos, I do hope you consider subscribing to the channel. I'm trying to get to a thousand so that I can monetize the channel. I have enough views for monetization, but not enough subscribers. So thanks for considering it. Now, this person was suggested via comments and she's not a super large creator, but I think she's large enough to comment on. And that's Louisa Cho. I think that's how I'm pronouncing her name. That's what YouTube tells me. I wish my boyfriend who speaks Chinese was home so I could ask him, but I digress. I think I'm pronouncing her name right. So Louisa Cho, it seems kind of like a Marie Forleo type, a, a coach of coaches, if you will. So what I thought we could do, since she doesn't really have a Wikipedia page, she mostly is sort of like does a lot of podcast interviews and obviously has her website, is I thought we could look at her website and kind of point out the guru -y flags that I noticed just on her website before we watch some of her content and kind of get to know her a little bit. So let's dive in. All right. So we have, this is her main page, build your own business, become who you're meant to be, claim your destiny. Um, she does look great in yellow, by the way. I'll just say that. And as you see here, you know, this is what you can expect. We'll tell it to you straight. Escape your, your nine to five escape velocity plan. Uh, okay. So, um, oh, okay. We've got our first thing, S six figure or more. So they're very into all the gurus, right? The seven figure, the eight figure business, the multiple comma club, that kind of thing. So uh, we've got that. Oh, and we've got um, vague use of logos. So um, as featured in Forbes, and all this stuff, right? Now we talked about this with Natasha Graziano before, how you can sort of, uh, not fake, I'm not saying she isn't in here. I'm saying that there was ways to get in these publications without necessarily being a national type celebrity. Um, but as you see, these aren't linked to the articles in these, I'm clicking on them and these aren't linked to the articles where she appears in them. So that's why I'm calling it a vague use of logos. Now let's take a look from guessing her coaching page probably will have the most stuff on it. Oh, what do we have first on the coaching page? We have an income claim. So we mentioned seven figures on the homepage, but here is a customized for you plan with specific to do's in my guidance. That'll take your business to $20,000 a month, up to a hundred thousand dollars a month or more per yeah, per month underlined. Okay. So she is making a claim here. Now, you're probably looking at this like me and thinking like, oh, okay. Like how, why does she think that? Oh, it's not because of lack of time resources or money. Okay. Okay. W why is it? Oh, it is a secret thing. That's right. There's a real reason that people are successful and they're just not telling us. So all these coaches, it's not, uh, it's not timing. It's not, uh, them meeting an investor. It's not, um, anything random that they might not have had full control over. It's some secret that successful people are somehow keeping from us. Um, which she can say with a hundred percent confidence, right? The gap between you're here and you're there. Okay. So, oh, and what do we have also on all these pages? A lot of copy, like tons of copy, like, and uh, I did see a certain sentence in here I wanted to point out. All right, so now we're on to the coaching page, right? And uh, oh, right away, 
ding, 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 an income claim. That's right. You could be making with her personal guidance every step of the way and a specific plan for you. You could be making $20,000 a month, you guys. Now, but you know what? You could also be making $100,000 a month or more. And the per month is underlined. So um, this is a claim. Um, and again, we see the seven and six figure thing. And you guys, you're not making $20,000 a month or $100,000 a month because you lack time, resources, or money. There's a real reason. And it's a real reason that business coaches and courses haven't told you. That's right. The real reason you're not successful is a secret thing. That's right. All those successful people, it's not that they started with money. It's not that they have connections. It's not that they like came into the market with their product or service at the exact right time. It's not that they met certain people that were helpful. It's a secret thing that they're all keeping from us, but that she's not going to keep from us. Okay. And, uh, God, you see, you know, unlike most business coaches, I didn't earn my stripes coaching coaches who coach other coaches or who are even in the coaching space. That's right. She could be a coach because she didn't start off as a coach. Um, oh, but she promises that, you know, we've gotten bits and pieces, but never the complete picture because otherwise we'd have the revenue and lifestyle that we want. That's right. We mentioned lifestyle because the real reason we want to be a guru, it's not so that we can um, grow our companies and hire our friends. It's not so that we can leave a legacy. It's that we want a revenue and a lifestyle. Now, in general, you know, there's a lot of copy usually on these sales pages, as there is in this one. Uh, that doesn't necessarily say it a ton. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. We're not even like, look at the scroll thing. We're a quarter of the way down the page. I'm not going to scroll all the way to the bottom, but there's a lot of content on this page, uh, less so than on the home, more so than on the home page. But in general, these gurus will, will leave a lot of editorial content. They want to tell a lot of stories so that you can see your story and things, right? And you'll notice that other than a sort of high-end coaching program, um, a lot of gurus don't work directly with clients. Like kind of what she has that's like her sort of affordable offerings. I don't know the difference between courses and trainings. Courses that help you build and grow your online business. So we have employee to entrepreneur. Clients come to me, attracting clients to your business. The ultimate course launch. That's right. It's a course about courses. My first 10K subscribers. So we have these sort of general sort of what, you know, oh, we have to get on the wait list because these aren't available. So they're not running yet. So a course, I think, kind of implies that it's a real time type thing. What's the difference between a course and a training, though? If you're not ready for one of my full-fledged courses, but are ready to grow your business. Okay, so training is less than a course. A course is more email emporium, done. The difference between being productive and getting business done. So a productivity class. Oh, 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 ding, ding, ding. Mention of mindset, mindset to money. How to become more confident because the reason you don't have money is because you're not confident. Uh, sales, sales on social. And so I'm just curious, I'm just going to click one of these now. You're getting lots of value and engaging, but is it actually making sales? Oh, here's some vague as mentioned in sales to social. I'm just trying to get a price. There are the parts. There are the replays. All sales are final in yellow. So not much of a uh, $333. Holy crap. My uh, Facebook uh, Meta Business Suite class on my website, I think, is 25 bucks. But maybe I need to work on my mindset. All right. Before we look at her videos, let's take a look at her Instagram. All right. Instagram bio. Uh, entrepreneur, investor, coach, New Yorker. New coach? I'll help you grow. At six figures? I'll help you scale to seven. So, oh, another guru thing. There for everyone. So whether you're just starting or whether you are a complete expert, this person can help you. So, um, yeah, not everyone's for everyone. Just saying. So here's, um, how I created 60 posts in 30 days while also running my business coaching, traveling and taking time off. Okay. So she does a lot of black and white, a lot of coat, uh, quotes with her, the more your business grows, the less it's about the doing and more about the being. Okay. So mindset stuff, some more, 
Um, beyond 20K per month, the most important thing isn't how much you make. It's what even more important is how you make it. Okay, so um, I appreciate the photos of her like with some food and like having some fun, but then she's got these sort of black and white guru -y, uh, posts intermixed in here. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm kind of not sure about her. Um, it seems like a lot of the information she shares is pretty vague. So I'll be curious how tactical she gets in these marketing trainings. So this first one we're going to react to, we might react to a second one, depending on how this one goes is, do you really know how to use social media properly? Hint, most get the marketing basics wrong. Runtime is 17 minutes and 30 seconds. So we'll see how this one goes. There might be a second one, but uh, yeah, let's see what Louisa Cho has to say about how we're doing marketing wrong. Social media can be an incredibly powerful tool for your business. She's kind of out of focus on my screen. I don't know if she looks out of focus to you, but I'm just acknowledging that. But there's a right way and a wrong way to go about using it to make sales and connect with clients. Today, we're going to cover the top three mistakes that I see new entrepreneurs making when trying to use social media. All right, so this is geared at new entrepreneurs. I'm genuinely curious if these people, what percentage of their content is geared at experts versus new people. I'm just going to put that out there need to build their business. We're going to talk about what those mistakes are and what to do instead. So mistake number one is to go out there on any social media platform and to start selling immediately. I'm sure you've seen posts like this as well, where maybe you are in a Facebook group or on Instagram and you see someone going in there, you've never uh, seen them before, and they write a post talking about how amazing their product or program or offer is, and then link to expect you to buy it right away. Here's the thing. This is what all the MLM marketing people say to you. Don't sell right away. The harder part is them coaching you when to make the sale. All we know is that you don't sell right away. And I think we get that on the human level. You don't immediately meet someone and say, hey, like, hi, my name's Nicole. Nice to meet you. We should be friends. Like you talk a little bit first, right? You build some rapport. Um, I think most of us, this is a pretty basic thing, but. Nobody goes on social media to be sold to. Why are we going on social media? We're going on social media to connect with others, to be entertained, to see what's going on, to be in the loop. And so when it comes to using social media, you can absolutely make a lot of sales using it, but the right way to go about it is not to go out there and just post your offers nonstop. That's not very effective and it doesn't feel good to anyone. So what I recommend you do instead is to reframe the way that you're thinking about it so that instead of thinking, how can I go out there and make sales, reframe into thinking, how can I go out there and give value? And here's why that makes such a big difference. People can tell when you're answering their bring value. Oh, Eric Warhe he would be proud questions, when you're connecting with them, when you're writing posts, just for the sake of making a sale. And that turns them off. However, when you go out there with the intention of how can I connect with people on social media? How can I really help someone? What that does is it opens them up to having a conversation with you. Now, this is especially important when you're first starting out because you don't have any brand recognition online. You don't have any social proof in the form of testimonials or I've been around for this long. I've helped this many people, things like that. And so how do you make up for it? You make up for it by actually connecting with someone and answering their questions and showing them, hey, this person is legit. They can actually help me get what I want. So how do you do that? There are a few top strategies that I recommend my students use. So one of the first top strategies is to whenever you are on social media, search for the questions that your audience might be asking, search for the key words. So for example, if you're a health coach, right? You might be searching for words like 
weight loss or weight loss struggle or how do I lose five pounds? Things like that to see what questions are coming up and who is asking them. Now, what you do next is in response to those questions, you can share a quick, very useful tip. Hey, I recommend you doing this. I've personally tried this myself. There's a lot of advice out there on this or that. And here's what I recommend doing instead. And what that does is it leads to a really good conversation where someone's saying, oh, wow, you, you are really helpful. How can I learn more? Or if you want, inviting them to chat with you further. And that, what that does, that leads to you building a relationship with them, you to helping them develop trust in you through having that conversation. So you're supposed to search for questions in groups that you may not be a part of or on pages you might not be participating in. This is going to take some time. I'm just warning you, if you want to implement the strategy, I'm not saying it's a bad strategy, but it's part of why it takes me a while when I do my Reddit stuff is that I have to find like sort of relevant questions that I want to even enter the discussion on. And then I have to think of something relevant to say about them. So um, this, this isn't something you can do quickly. I'll share with you, that's how I got my first ever paying client back when I was doing digital advertising consulting. I didn't even know what I could sell. So I truly wasn't looking to make any sales. But what I did was I went into Facebook groups and uh, I saw people asking, so you went, you had no act, you have no sales agenda whatsoever, but you're going into Facebook groups to interact with people to build the relationship so that you can sell something later. I don't know. That sounds like an intent to me about advertising. So I saw this woman asking about it and I messaged her and I said, Hey, this is what I do in my job. And I'm happy to answer your questions in return. I'd love to ask for a few minutes of your time to get some market research market research. Okay. So you did want something from her. Like I went in with the intention to not make a sale, but I went in to get research some market research. Yeah. And she said, yes. Yeah. Because you're going to use that market research to make a sale later. So we had that exchange. She found it super helpful. She actually found it so helpful that for the next two weeks, she asked follow-up questions. And what happened was I continued answering those questions and giving her a ton of value. And about two weeks after our first call, she emailed me and she said, you've given me so much value for free. I know I will get so much more value out of this if I hire you. So how can I hire you? And I actually had to say, okay, please wait a minute because I need to go out there and figure out what I could even sell. And so we scheduled a call for a week later and I was so nervous, but that's how I got my first client because I had built that relationship beforehand. I didn't so you built a relationship answering questions while you had another job. Okay. Interesting. I didn't have a fancy website. I didn't have credentials. I hadn't been featured in any large publications. I just had my job experience. I knew what I was talking about and the desire to help. And that's how I like I said, got my first client. So what you can see when it comes to social media is it's that it's amazing for connecting with clients and building your business. But what it comes down to is how you go about it. So you don't want to go about it by trying to write a post about how amazing your offer is or how amazing you are and trying to sell. Instead, what you want to do to go about it is to connect, to entertain, to engage with people first and use that to build relationships and open up. Oh my God. We're six minutes in. So we're almost halfway through. And all we know is don't start selling immediately. Bring value conversations that then lead into you building relationships, developing trust, and eventually into the sale. Now, this is especially important, as I mentioned earlier, when you're first starting out, because that's the, that's the biggest asset that you have, the relationship, the intimacy that you can build with someone, because you don't have the fancy website, the credentials, or the hundreds or thousands of clients who have given you testimonials. So, that's mistake number one, what not to do and what to do instead. Mistake number two that I see so often is that someone will go into a new group or onto someone else's platform, their Instagram account or their blog or their YouTube channel, 
and not respect the vibe of the group. And this is incredibly important because maybe the group is really fun, has a really fun and formal tone. And that person will go in posting a really serious, really professional or corporate sounding type of uh, post. And it just completely dis ha has a disconnect with that audience and what they're looking for inside that group or that channel. And a really great analogy, a way to think about it when it comes to how that works and it would work in real look in real life is imagine if you go to a club. And the way you dress, the way you talk is very informal, depending on what kind of club, what's going on. Yeah, she's going to say, like, you're going to a club versus you're going to a job interview. That's what I think she's going to say. Who you're hanging out with. And imagine if you took that same way of dressing and way of speaking and brought that to work with you. So maybe you're wearing a sequin dress or a really fun jumpsuit or something that's a little bit more risque and shows a little bit more skin. And the, you're going to work uh, having had a few drinks and you're being really informal. You're going up to your boss saying, hey, what's up, dude? Right. Or what's up, dudette? That's dudette. I think she must have grown up in the 90s like me because uh, I haven't heard do that in a while. It's a really funny image, but that's the equivalent of what happens in a lot of these places where people are going online and going on into any of these forms and not respecting the vibe of that group. Right. And just like you would do one thing and say one thing and work because that's what's appropriate and go to a club and do and say another thing. That's what you want to be thinking about as well when it comes to your uh, the way you show up on social media. And this is about just experimenting and testing and researching uh, what it comes down to is understanding the host of the channel, the account, the group, the forum that you're wanting to engage in, what tone have they set? What tone has that set for the entire group and community? And that's what you want to respect. So if a group is a bit more fun and informal, great. I've had uh, students have great success with informal groups. Oh my God, we get it dead horse beaten where they will share fun images or quotes or posts to kind of get people's attention to be entertaining to have fun and then lead into the conversation and the relationship building that we talked about earlier if a group is more formal for example you don't want to go in and start throwing around f-bombs or we get it kind of just being <laughs> super God. informal you want to go in and be a little bit more in tune with the vibe of that group and so maybe caught a vibe be the way you speak in your content the way you're connecting with others is a little bit different as well and that's what you want to be thinking about how can i really go in there and, and fit in and be respectful of the community that that person has built because that's what you're doing you're engaging with a community that someone else has built uh especially on social media if you're engaging on other accounts or channels or groups wherever that is and you want to be respectful of that. Otherwise, what's going to happen is that community is not going to, you're not going to fit in very well with that community. You're going to be completely disrespecting the admin or the creator of that group and community. And that's often going to get you blocked or kicked out and just completely defeats the purpose. And so that's mistake number two. Make sure that you are respecting the vibe of the group so that you can go in there, you can connect with the right people, you can build real relationships. And what that even does is it can allow you to build a relationship with the admin or the creator of the community. Does she think we're stupid or does she just like, like to hear us all talk? I don't know. Which will be even more beneficial for you in the long run because that could be a partnership, that could be a joint training, that could be something where they promote you to their audience so that it magnifies and leverages the effect that you would have had just posting in there by yourself. So there are a lot of win-wins that can come as long as you respect the vibe, the language, the tone, the environment, and the rules of each group, each community, each channel, each account that you are engaging with. So that's mistake number two. And that leads us to mistake number three. Okay. Let's predict what mistake number three is. So mistake number one is selling right away. Mistake number two is not respecting the vibe of the community. 
And um, number three, okay, it could either be like friend requesting people right away or something, or yeah, let's go with that. Which is that I so, again, so often see people just on their own accounts, their own groups posting and not engaging because I'm not engaging. I should have known. Oh, that's the other super basic thing. And remember this ultimately all comes down to why do people go on social media? It's not to be sold to, it's not to read your amazing content and, and learn from it and then realize, Oh, I need to work with you. No matter how amazing your content is, it's simply not the function of social media. People go onto social media to connect, to engage, to be entertained, to see what's going on. And so what that means for you when you're building your own community, whether that's through posting in your own group or on your own Instagram account or wherever, or posting first in other groups to build a little bit of awareness for you, step one is to post good content, but that's just step one. What you want to be spending the rest of your time on and more of your time than actually sharing content is to engage with people. And there are so many ways that you can do that. The simplest way to start out and the most basic way is that when someone responds to something that you've shared, to respond back. So even if someone, if you've shared a post and someone is saying, hey, this is great, thank you. You can say something as simple as, I'm so glad you found it helpful. If you've been on a part of my YouTube channel for a while, you know that that's something that I do as well. So I'm walking my talk. Or if they're asking a question, you can share a simple response. Now, how in depth you go with this is up to you. Maybe you decide that you want to really give them a mini fun coaching session, especially if you're starting out. Or if you're more established, you have a lot of content, you can share, hey, I've answered this question before on another piece of content. You can check it out here. Or if you want to give them a quick tip, as long as it doesn't lead into a huge free coaching session, which there's no need to do that. So you want, so you were answering at the beginning of this, she said that she answered a woman's question on social media. And then the woman kept asking more questions for like two weeks and she kept answering them. So somehow that's, you should do that for free, but it shouldn't give a coaching session for free. I don't understand how they're different, I guess, but. But you're engaging, you're giving value. You're showing appreciation for someone who has taken the time to review your content and then actually respond. Do you know how? hard that can be. Think about how many uh, pieces of content or how many YouTube videos that you've watched and simply said, oh, this was good, but not responded to or shared. So when someone takes the extra step to do that, you absolutely want to show your appreciation. That's how you, by the way, build a community for yourself. As we mentioned earlier, another great way is to search for people asking questions that you can answer and start answering them. That leads into great conversations and relationships. And if you are in another community or another account, if, if that admin is sharing a, a post, then you do want to support that admin to, again, show appreciation for the community that they built that's allowed you to connect with potential clients as well. And again, what that does is just another way to continue building that relationship with the admins, the other members of the community, so that you can form those relationships and those partnerships down the road that we talked about earlier. And so what this does in effect is it has you showing up. It has you really being a part of a community. Think about it. If you were a member of a club or an organization and you went in and all you did was just post flyers for your, uh, your business and then you left, that's the physical equivalent. Versus if you go into the club, you, you can go in and you know everyone by name. You can say, hey, so-and-so, it's great to see you. How's your kid doing? Or how's that uh, new puppy that you just got? Or that new project that you're working on? That creates a completely different vibe. Or like the traditional golf, uh, uh, golf club business cliche, hey, let's go and play golf, right? My golf buddy, let's do some business. It's really the same Thing, the same vibe that you're going for when you're using social media, no matter if it's a group, if it's a certain platform, if it's a certain forum, it's the same thing. This applies no matter where you are. 
so that you can be in that place of knowing everyone's names, of having people say, oh, hey, I know so-and-so, let me recommend them to you. Or, hey, I see the question that you're asking, so-and-so you would be a great person to answer, you should ask them. Or even when you're sharing content and has someone say, you can have someone say in the comments, hey, I did a free coaching session with this person or they've helped me so much. What does, what does that do for you to really boost your credibility in the eyes of the but how many times do people do that? I'll say this. Um, the first few years I was in business, I would do three volunteer projects a year. In one case, I migrated a 15 person nonprofits email uh, to Google. I rebuilt their website and I did all this stuff for free. Okay. Do you think that they made a post about that on their social media or anywhere else? They did not. So what I did was I came up with this policy, you know what, I'm going to do three free web projects a year. So by mid January, I'd done all the free projects or had like had, you know, sort of like signed them on and was starting them. So then later on in the year, I'd be like, well, you built a free website for so and so, or you did this for free for so and so. So then I said, you know what, then none of you get any. So I have a whole thing on my website where I don't do volunteer web work and why I don't do it. And anytime someone asks me for it, I tell them my policy of not doing it. And I send them a link to that blog post that I wrote almost 10 years ago. Um, so just because you do something nice for somebody does not mean they're going to shout you out. You might have to ask them to do that. The rest of the community. And all of this does not have to take that much time. Remember, if you're just sharing posts, if you're spending 10 minutes engaging with others a day, that's it. It's not like you need it's going to take more than 10 minutes. I know every time I go on Reddit and I'm like, okay, I'm going to comment on five relevant posts and then leave. It's like an hour later. So it's going to take you longer than 10 minutes for you to comment on things. You need to be online for hours at a time. Nobody has the time or the energy to, to be doing that and to be doing that consistently. Yeah. So as I agree with that. As long as you make sure you're avoiding these three mistakes, and you are in a place of using social media the way that people, the, your potential audience want to engage on it. That's going to lead to you building the community, the relationships, the audience, the clients that you want in a way that also feels good to you and ultimately has you building a community and fans for life as well instead of just becoming known as that person, oh yeah, who just comes in, posts, and doesn't care about anything or anyone else. You don't, you don't want that because that's not going to make you sales anyways, right? So those are the three mistakes. Make sure you avoid them and then make sure you do instead the steps that we discussed to boost your community and your clients. Now, if you want more, I've got another really great video to share with you. And that's how to use social media to get clients, how to, now you know what mistakes to avoid. What do you do? So make sure you check out that video on how to use social media to get clients. And if you want to learn how to get your first paying client, you can sell us a course. I've got a really powerful proven 20 second script to help you do just that. And so make sure that you, if it's a 20 second script, you couldn't just give it to us. Uh, go to the link in the, in the video, shared in the video, uh, probably up here to the landing page to opt in to get that PDF that has that 20 a PDF with two sentences on it. 20 second script to help you get your first paying client. That's all I've got for you today. Uh, make sure you hit subscribe if you found this helpful so that you're notified when I release a new video like this every week on building your own online coaching, consulting, and course business. Thanks for watching. Leave me a comment and I will see you next time. Okay. So she's definitely guru because she wants us to opt in for a 20 second script, which I think is ridiculous. And you saw this video just now, it could have easily been a two minute long video and not a 17 minute video. All right. So she's kind of boring in my opinion. She could have said most of that content in like probably three to five minutes instead of 17 minutes. I just found it was kind of repetitive. And I'm not sure if these three marketing mistakes selling right away not respecting the community and not engaging with people are the three marketing mistakes everyone makes. I'll be completely honest, but I don't want to judge her on one video because it was a relatively short one. So I want to watch one more from her. And so we're going to watch this one, which uh, as of the day I'm filming was made less than two weeks ago. And it's email marketing to grow your business step-by-step.
It is about seven minutes long. Let's see if something that is more specific and tactical is something that she covers in a more interesting way. Everything you need to know to make sales via email. Okay, already production value is higher. Good for you. We've got a lot to cover, so let's jump right in. First, let's get this out of the way. Which email marketing software you use doesn't matter. They all work. Agree. But if you want a recommendation, use ActiveCampaign. It I am 99% sure this is an affiliate link, but I will check after. It's robust, will grow with you, and is great for beginners too. But no matter what you choose, stay away from more complicated options like Keep slash Infusionsoft or Entreport. They're harder to learn, pricier, and not necessary until later. Now that that's out of the way, let's talk about how to build your email list. Because you've got to have a list before you can start emailing them to sell your offers. To get people on your list, you need a lead magnet, a reason for people to join your email list. Often, this is a free PDF or video that they'll get in exchange for sharing their email address. Pro tip. For most service and training businesses, I recommend a simple PDF around five pages. That's enough to share valuable information without it being so long people find it overwhelming. Okay, so far we're a minute in, we've got some software recommendations and non-recommendations, and we have a specific recommendation about the length of your theoretical ebook. Yeah, because I would be pissed if I like gave my email and I got a 20 second script, Louisa. <laughs> but getting people onto your list is just the first step because just having your lead magnet doesn't mean that people will automatically find it. There are many ways to grow your email list by sharing your lead magnet, including using social media, partnerships, collaborations, and affiliates, guest posting, podcast interviews, paid ads, and blogging. All of these boil down to just one core principle. You share valuable content for that platform and then offer your lead magnet as big sister tough love. Don't wait to be found or otherwise you might be waiting a long time. Something extra, but a warning. Okay. I feel like that's a, those little Marie Forleo tweetables of Marie TV, but don't try to do all of these at once. Pick one or two to focus on first so you can master and scale the strategy. That's how you'll grow the fastest. But before you start growing, there is something you'll want to have in place first, an automated email welcome sequence. This is a series of preset emails that someone will get after they sign up for your lead magnet. This sequence can span a few days to months. For your first sequence, just a handful of emails is enough. Here is a simple way to structure those emails. First email is simple. Link to the lead magnet you promised. Second email, share a testimonial if you have one. Email number three, share a bit about your background and story, but keep it related to what you do. Pro tip, I like to add in a few fun personal facts too to bring out your personality. Plus, you never know what someone will connect with. In the fourth email, share the details of your offer. But make sure you're focusing on the results whatever you're selling can help someone get. For example, if you sell a service, focus on what your service will help someone be, do, or have, not the number of calls or how much support they get. Email number five, share the top thing that makes your product different. It could be your methodology, background, experience, delivery, or something else. But make it clear how your product is different from your competitors. This sequence will help you start off on the right foot with new subscribers and make sales to ideal clients who are ready to buy. High five to that. After this sequence, your email subscribers should start getting your regular emails. But that brings us to the number one question I usually get around this point. How often should you send emails? I recommend daily weekday emails. If that feels too overwhelming right now, yeah. or you don't have a list yet, aim who the hell wants to send daily emails? My God. Aim for at least one email a week as you're growing your list. Ugh. As you start growing your list, work your way up to two to three weekly emails as soon as you can. I don't agree with this, but. Now, what I'm gonna share next is a bit controversial, but it will. I don't know, one email a day sounds pretty controversial to me. If you are a, a company sending daily emails, like I'm unsubscribing real quick. Help you make a lot more sales. In almost every email you send, you should sell your product. That means if you sell a service via a sales call, your email should direct to the sales call. If you sell a product, your email should direct to the sales page. There is a common mistake. Yeah, I mean, your email template is pretty big. Like you've got a lot of like scrolling room in there. I know our email, we try to put like 
some useful links and articles. We do a client profile and then we do a, um, and then we do like a link to schedule your call. Like, so we do kind of two tech, we do kind of a testimonial and a sales thing, but we put a lot of other content in there too. But the idea of doing that every day, it would feel like a lot of sales if you had a sales pitch every single day. This conception that you shouldn't sell in every email because you need to nurture your audience. But this is actually bad advice because I believe the point of any business is to solve a problem. Your ideal clients want that solution. They're not looking to be nurtured. Where this misconception comes from is because a lot of email marketers are only writing emails that hard sell, describing the problem, sharing the solution their product provides, and essentially telling the reader they need to buy the product. Of course, no one wants to read a lot of emails like that. But when you do email marketing right, you can sell with every email and have people love to read all your emails. The key is to make your emails interesting. But contrary to popular teachings, this doesn't mean you have to go overboard with your personality or make up crazy stories. It's about sharing emails your readers want to read. That can be as simple as teaching a fact or anecdote they might not have heard before, sharing a new way of thinking about something, telling a mundane personal story that has an interesting takeaway. Yeah, like don't lie. That's, that's like probably a good thing to keep in mind generally. Answering a question they might be wondering. Another pro tip, it's not the story or fact itself that makes the email interesting, but how you tell it and the takeaway that you use it to share. That's how you can turn any piece of information or story into an interesting email. But it's not as simple as sharing a fact or story and tagging on at the end, hey, buy my product. The key lies in how you structure your email to keep your reader's attention, starting with your email subject line. That is the first thing your reader will see and what they'll use to decide if they even wanna open your email. You'll get a lot more people reading your emails if your subject line speaks to something they want, makes them laugh, or piques their curiosity. After they open your email, your first few sentences have to deliver on that subject line. Otherwise, your readers will X out. This is known as your hook that grabs your reader's attention with a story, statement, question, or fact that has them wanting to keep reading. Next comes what I call the payoff. Basically, what is your reader getting out of the email? It could be learning something new or learning to think differently about something they already know. Or it could be simply that they get to have a good laugh or enjoy a story. Key pro tip. A common mistake is to think that the only payoff a reader can get from your email is value. It's like eating vegetables. If all you're giving someone is broccoli, that gets boring real fast. Even though just like value, it's good for your reader. At the end of your email, don't leave your reader hanging, give them a call to action. This is often the link to your offer. But a very important pro tip, make sure you connect what the email is about to your call to action. Don't make it feel like you told a great story and are now switching into sales mode, but don't take too long making that transition either. In fact, that applies to your entire email. People always ask, how long should my emails be? The perfect length is not a set word count. It's as long as it needs to be to get the point across, but as short as possible while getting it across in the most concise way. Writing emails can be fun and incredibly lucrative. In fact, studies estimate that email generates a 3,800% ROI compared to a measly 28% ROI. Yeah, I mean, we've seen this with other, we saw this in the Jenna Kutcher video that email marketing has a, a, the highest ROI of pretty much any form of marketing that you can have on social media. But I know it can feel like learning a new language when you're getting started with it. That's why I created my email emporium training. It's a collection of 15 of my best performing emails of all time. That means these are 15 of my top emails over the past near decade of making millions via email and writing to over 100,000 plus subscribers. They are proven. But even more importantly, for each email, I explain the unique hook it uses, what makes it effective, and how to use it for your business. It'll give you a shortcut to writing incredibly interesting and profitable emails without having to use any cliche templates that don't work anyways. You can get all the details about the training at... So you have templates, but they're not cliche. Okay. This link, plus I'll link it in the description as well. High five to email marketing becoming a huge profit driver in your business.
All right, so this video is infinitely more watchable. I don't know if it was the sort of image video kind of scene changes or the fact that she got to the point right away and maybe her tactical trainings are a little bit more watchable. I didn't hate this information, but I also didn't feel like I could take this information and start an email newsletter, especially like saying that people should be doing it daily or work their way up to that sounded crazy to me. A couple of things I wanted to point out. The first thing, which is that I said at the end of the video, I would check that active campaign, which is that email marketing software she recommends was an affiliate link and ding, ding, ding. It is. And she's linking all her other stuff too. Totally fine. Good for her. Um, but, um, but yeah. And the other thing that was, I thought this was funny. I was looking at her Twitter and, um, you know, she like mentioned her hundred thousand person email list. But she retweeted this. Um, I don't know when she retweeted this. I can't tell. But it was written in 2016. So, but the, the, that you know, the average email list of supposedly is is 3,489 uh, for revenues between one million and fifty million dollars. So you don't have to have a big email list, even though she like has a big email list. But I thought this was the most interesting thing I sort of found because I was like, you know. This person's vibe really reminds me of Marie Forleo. Now, Selena Sue, I don't really know. Apparently, uh, this is a marketing firm for the gurus. So Marie Forleo right on top saying that, you know, results oriented, brilliant person. We got Daniela Port, Gabrielle Bernstein, uh, Pat Flynn. So we see a lot of gurus here, right? And we also see Louisa Chu right here, too. So I'm wondering, she is Marie adjacent. Do they work together like on stuff? Do they cross promote each other's stuff? I don't know. But if they work at the same marketing company, I would say that signs point to that being maybe a possibility. So um, if you notice a little Marie Forleo vibe, I do too. And I think that's on purpose. All right. So what did we learn over the course of these several videos? Well, in the marketing mistakes video, we learned that we shouldn't sell immediately. We shouldn't just immediately join a group and start selling something. Um, I think we all knew that, but somehow we needed to hear it again. We need to search for people asking questions on social media and respond to them to create value and build a relationship. So somehow you answering a woman you don't know on the internet's question for two weeks straight is somehow different than you giving a free coaching session. Um, she kind of, she's like, well, don't get them a free coaching session. And I'm like, what do you think me answering 25 emails is? <laughs> it's just in written format. Um, respond to comments when you get them. Engage with people um, on your social media. I guess for most small people, they're not getting a lot of comments. So, you know, we're engaging with them generally. And then the email marketing one, you know, she talked about using a lead magnet, which is a free offer to get subscribers. Uh, she said to make it maybe like a five page PDF, like something of substance. So I appreciated that. Um, although she is herself has a, having a 20 second script to get your sale, to get a guaranteed sale. So I'm not sure I'm seeing a little duplicity in that, uh, that suggestion that you should make an email sequence so that when people join your email, they get a series of sort of onboarding emails. And she gave an example sequence in there. She wants us all to work our way to sending up one marketing email a day. That sounds insane to me and probably most people. I think once a week is fine. Once a month is fine. I think that that's more realistic for most small business owners. And she says in your email template, her controversial advice is that you should sell something, whether that's like um, a coaching call or whether that's a product or something like that. Um, don't just offer value, but offer to sell something in the email, which makes sense because your email is of length, whereas a Facebook post does not give you really a lot of room to do that in every single post, for example. So does Louisa know what she's talking about? Yeah, I mean, she graduated from a top school with an electrical engineering degree. She's not a, she's not a dumb person. She knows how to do this stuff, but I'm not sure if she's necessarily, I find her the best teacher of it. I would have to watch more videos to see, but um, in these two, I, f I felt like she gave some sort of scaffolding to that in, in particular in that second one, but I don't think I know enough to do it, but I think that's done by design. I watch it and I think, oh, I don't know how to do this. I go to her website. I see that she sells an email marketing course that I just buy. So there you go. Um, I think there's worse people you can listen to, but I definitely don't 
think she's necessarily the best person um, to do this stuff, right? It's just my just my opinion. Now I will say her like website is a lot more guru-y than a lot of her content is in terms of like the couple of videos we watched anyway. Like her website made her seem a lot more douchey than she was of her video. And maybe that's because she wants to attract those high-end coaches, the seven-figure earners. But at the same time, I don't know, I'm seeing a little incongruence there. And um, that kind of makes me wonder a little bit. So I think there's worse people you can listen to. I think there's better people too. I'm sort of, I don't think she's necessarily problematic, but I don't think you need to buy a $300 course about selling things on social media. I just don't. You can just watch some of the videos on this channel, for example, and probably get a lot of similar information. So yeah, she's not inherently problematic, but there's enough guru vibes in particular on the website to give me pause. She seems a lot douchier there. And maybe she's just trying to play that eight figure marketing game. Anyway, that's all I got. If you have gurus or videos or even topics that you'd like me to react to, you can leave it as a comment on this video. Or if you're a more private person, you can use the contact form on my website. Those all go to me. And uh, thanks for watching and um, have a great rest of your day. And I will see you next week because the gurus, they keep on coming. But don't worry, you've got a friend, which is me in the marketing business. Take care.